We're here with Claudia Wells from Back to the Future, and she also owns her own clothing store, and we're gonna talk about that later. What brings you to Dallas, Texas? I'm here for the Dallas Comic Show, and to meet Texans. All right, and you've been here before? I was here a few years ago, I think, three or four years ago in Alamo City. Okay, all right. But this is my first time ever with the Dallas Comic Show. So what are you gonna be doing here this weekend? I'm signing autographs, and there's a DeLorean car, mm -hmm. and doing photo ops with fans, and then tomorrow night we're screening Back to the Future, and I'm doing a Q&A, and doing more signings, and Sunday signings again, and I brought a lot of Back to the Future pictures. I brought the original Clock Tower flyer, and I signed the back of it with the I love you 555 oh, wow. okay. just like I did to Marty, because that was my handwriting. So that's one of my favorite things. And pictures that also show the clock tower. So it's a cool one-two punch to get both of them. And I'm just here to love on the fans and meet people and say hello and do pictures. So, why do you do that? When most actors, or a lot of actors, would rather have their distance. Why do you feel the need oh, to be with the fans. I like that question because it is such an honor and such a privilege to be able to bring joy and happiness to people and if because I was in a movie that people love by meeting someone if I can bring a kind of a joy and a happiness to them that changes their day why would I not? It's just such an incredible privilege and honor. How many people can can so easily bring happiness to someone like that. It's a joy for me to do that. I feel, I feel like it's a gift I'm receiving to be able to see that kind of happiness on someone else's face and have someone have an experience like that just because I showed up, because I happen to be in a movie that they love. It's, it's such a privilege to me. Okay. I, I don't take that lightly at all. I, I think it's just a beautiful experience and people are so nice. All over the world, everywhere I go, people are so nice. Excellent. So, I'm going to probably be jumping around a That's bit. That's fine. Here. My brain always jumps around. <laughs> um, you're from, you came from where, I read it earlier, but you were born... I was born in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, yes. a suburb of Pataling Jaya in Southeast Asia. How did you, how were your parents there? Like, why were they there? Do you have a relative who's from there? No, your father? not at all. My, my mom and dad lived there for two and a half years with my brother and sister. Okay. And then she got pregnant with me. My father researches tropical diseases, or oh. did. He's 94. Okay. Still, he's not actively researching tropical diseases anymore, but he's still... Um, sharpest attack and completely you know a very very fit young 94 but he started the joint medical program between uc berkeley and ucsf though prior to that uh, he traveled the world doing research of tropical diseases so in malaysia there was actually a, a, a parasite that was coming up through the feet of the children in the water and it was dis causing disease he was sent there to figure that out so he discovered there's a snail that releases an enzyme that kills the parasite that's been going through the bottom of the feet of the children playing in the water. He put the snails in that and then solved the whole problem. I'm putting it in a nutshell. <laughs> right. I could probably say it a lot better, but that's what he was doing for two and a half years. In, he called it in uh, the Malayan Islands because at the time it was more than just Malaysia. Okay, okay. And then I was born, and then they moved back to San Francisco as soon as I was old enough to travel. Now, you were in, you were in Herbie the Love Bug, yes. the show, yes. which I remember watching, and it, oh, only lasted, wow. it, only, it only lasted a while. Yeah, it was a, which, a, I was like the queen of mid-season replacements. Right, right, right. Yeah, Fast Times, the show. Yeah. Um, Off the Rack, Herbie the Love Bug, yeah, Fast yeah. Times, right. Rise and Shine. 
lovers and other strangers. And you did some, uh, I don't want to say after school specials. I but did. I did after school specials oh, okay. and school break specials. Right, right. And then there was the the drug one, the one uh, anti drug video. Right. Stop the madness. Yeah, the stop the madness. Video. Yes. Yeah. Um, what? <sighs> A lot of the kids back then, and they say it now. Like there's ones the, the, the younger <coughs> kid actors mm -hmm. that would do those, but they were on drugs at the same time <laughs> but um it doesn't seem like you were you were i had like, never been on yeah. drugs i had never seen anyone on drugs right. i had never seen drugs um <laughs> right when i did any of those roles so i was i researched it i i literally called dr Patton, my pediatrician in san francisco to ask him what happens when someone does drugs what are the physical responses when they do drugs um both times. I, I, I had nothing to go on other than creating it. Did you, my, like I said, my mind keeps wandering now because you're leading me in directions. Did you see those problems? No. Like in Hollywood? Not and at all. And I, such? Was so, I was very sheltered and protected. Okay. There was okay. one time on set when everyone was finished that I saw a director with a joint <laughs> which I wouldn't have even known at the time it was right. called a joint and she passed it around to some of the actors and I just like backed up and I had no part of it I would never it was just not it was not um, anything in my repertoire or, or lifestyle as a teenager at all okay okay I just had to know that after yeah, we no, were talking there for a second. Um, what I heard you earlier talking about Dean Jones, yeah. who, like I said, I grew up watching him in the old Herbie old Love Bug movies. Me too. He was the bad guy in some movie I watched too. I can't remember now, but he was great. Yeah. And you acted with him. Yes. Um, and I heard you earlier telling them, the other people, sorry, yeah. that he was very adamant about teaching you about the Bible. Not just about the Bible. <laughs> about God. About God. Yes. And you know, I had two little brothers in the show and there was the love interest, his, my mom, who was his love interest in the show. He really didn't spend time with anyone except me. And he would always pull me aside and say, Claudia, come here, sit on the grass with me. I want to talk to you. And I was like, okay, Dean. And he'd say, I need to talk to you about discernment. And I want to talk to you about God. And I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you what that is. I want to talk to you about Jesus, God's son. I want to, and, and he would, he said, there's a, a, a vacuum, Claudia, and I want you to have it filled with God because if it's not, it's going to get filled with men and drugs and things that there'll be a break with you and your mother because I had a very tight relationship with my mom. And I just sat there and I, I listened. No one had ever talked to me like that or about any of that. I grew up with Santa Claus and, and the Easter Bunny, and I didn't even know I was Jewish till I was a teenager, like a late teenager. And then on Sundays, he and his wife, Lori Jones, would meet us in the parking lot of Church on the Way, and, which was their church, and I'd never gone to church. I sang, actually, um, in an Episcopalian church when I was a kid, but I was singing. It, so I, I, it had nothing to do with me, uh, with anything other than I went there, I sang, and I twiddled my thumbs and didn't listen. But at this point, I was in church with him, and um, it was Pastor Jack Hayford, which was a, uh, he's very well known. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. yeah. And then afterwards, we would always go to brunch <laughs> at the Cock and the Bull on Sunset. And one of those Sundays at brunch, when he was explaining to me about what it means to be saved and what it means to have your name written in the book of life and i said the sinner's prayer with him where i apologized for anything i've done and i asked god into my heart and i said yeah i do believe that jesus is god's son and i want a new life and i want it i want it to be in god's hand and i awesome. said that okay. with dean and Literally, it changed my life forever. They gave me my first Bible. It was a living Bible, and Lori put tabs in different sections. She said, read this one first, and then go to the green tab, and then go to the red tab. And um, we remained friends forever. Uh, so, 
uh, how did that affect your choices in taking roles and in your uh, your moving through Hollywood? Well, I was always, um, I grew up pretty conservative in San Francisco with my mom. And um, so I was already turning down roles. Anything that wasn't to my mom's standards was turned down right away. Even, that's how I use it. That's one of the reasons I opened my store uh, when I was 25, because I really thought I was going to go immediately back into acting, but I wanted a financial basis also. Right. So I would never be desperate or too hungry or anything, because when I used to act, if the role wasn't right, we turned it down. So it, that was before I ever even met Dean. We would turn things down, or I wouldn't audition for something. And they'd say, well, it's just a little bit of nudity. She just takes her shirt off. <laughs> my mother would be like, are you kidding me? That's not my daughter. So, so you were raised well. I was raised well. Very good. All right. I was San Francisco conservative. Um, yeah, I was raised differently than had I necessarily grown up in LA. Right. Right. More, more culture, right? just a little, a little more old fashioned. Right. So let's transition here into since you mentioned the clothing store. You opened a clothing store. You're 25. I opened it when I was 25. I still 25. own it and work there now. Yes, yeah, and I have actually seen the pictures. I did a little research, looked at the pictures. Looks like a great store. I love it. Where did you come up with the idea for the store, a resale shop of expensive clothing? Well, the thing is... Which seems kind of weird, <laughs> like an oxymoron. Yeah, you think thrift, thrift <laughs> yeah. shoppers. I, um, my mom discovered a resale shop for women and bought some gowns there for me when I was dating someone and went to a lot of dinner parties and things like that. And the other women were, you know. Right. So I was thinking about that several years later and I thought, you know, as a man to wear a beautiful suit, you have to spend a lot of money in order for the fabric to flow, in order for the tailoring to be just so and to feel good in something. If you spend just a few hundred, it's gonna feel like cardboard and look uncomfortable and feel uncomfortable. And I thought, I don't think that's fair that just the most wealthy men get to feel so good in their clothing and have that kind of power and stature when they walk into a room. I want every man to experience that. So I thought, there's women's resale, let's do men's resale. And it was a fair, no one had ever heard of that. No one had thought about that. Men were a little like, I'm not gonna wear someone else's clothes. But I'm extremely particular, so I'll buy from millionaires and billionaires and rock stars and superstars who can wear things one time. Or they shop so much they don't wear it at all and it still has the price tags on it. And that's what I fill my store with. So it's Armani, Versace, Canali, Zania, Prada, Gucci, Dolce Gabbana. Um, it's the best designers in the world. Suits, jeans, dress shirts, shoes, ties, belts, jackets. I have. It, it's like an Italian boutique. It looks like everything's brand new because the quality is brand new. I don't have right. anything that has even a single bit of wear on it. If it's ever been worn, it's dry cleaned. And because I think men are very particular and, and they don't want to be like walking in someone else's shoes. Right. And I opened it and just found after I opened it that I had quite a knack for it and that I am gifted at dressing men. I can just look at someone and, and Put them together and make them more handsome than they ever thought they could ever be and it's a thrill for me to do that so is it at the same location that it was in 25 same years location ago that i opened in wow. 1991 wow. i opened december 19th at 10 a.m 1991 and my store is in the exact same place in studio city on ventura boulevard right now well that's California. fortunate that's very fortunate to be I'm in the same place i'm ecstatic about it i I love my store as much every day that I'm there as I did the very first day I opened. Um, I, I love my customers, I love my clients, fans can find me at the store and I'm more than happy to see them there. I've got Back to the Future pictures and things there because they like the uh, memorabilia to, right. you know, be able to get things. Um, and I get to change men's lives because to understand what it feels like to wear a $5,000 suit and pay a few hundred dollars for it the same suit and everything. There's no fakes in my store. It's it's the real deal. Right. And it literally changes someone's stature and, and their their 
feeling of, of power in a room or who they're going to date or whether they're going to get the job or if they're really rich, they shop at my store because they're smart and they want to save money. Speaking of memorabilia, Back mm -hmm. to the Future, what, and I know everybody asks you this, <laughs> what does it feel like to be a part of this juggernaut of a franchise that just never goes away? I mean, it's like, it's always there. It's amazing, isn't it? I like that word, juggernaut. I mean, do you ever flip through the TV and go, wow, I'm on every channel? Wow. Somewhere. <laughs> I don't. But I do get, you know, I'll get posts, oh, I'm watching you right now, or I'll get a text of, you know, the screen of my scene, or, um, it's mind-boggling. Right. Like, I haven't tried to wrap my head around it, because it makes no sense. I just am grateful to God for the opportunity, and for that position, because, um, that it, it keeps me so current in the public eye which is extraordinary to me when I did this job 35 years ago. Next year, it'll be 35 years. Right. I truly think there's no explanation other than God that I got to be in it and experience what I get to experience. What, um, oh, where, where was I going to go? Oh, do you want, you have kids, right? I, I have a kid. Oh, okay. I thought I was going to have many kids. <laughs> How, how it's a lot old? harder than it looks. How old's again? He's 24. Okay. Have you watched, have you seen Stranger Things? No, I haven't, but I, I got the, a million oh. posts that they they did my scene in it. I, I don't know. I can't the remember. Last scene I the watched movie? two scenes, and I can't remember which scenes it is. I think. I just I didn't know whether was, you saw. I didn't, but I got posts about it. And I, yes, they did do the last scene of the movie because one of the posts oh, had yeah, a yeah, screenshot yeah, yeah. of us in the car. Yes, yes. And I'd never heard of the series before. Oh my gosh, it's Apparently excellent. Apparently it's quite popular. Uh, it's excellent. I don't watch TV. Yeah. My TV is complicated and I, <laughs> I'm not very technical. But yeah, you are in it. Yeah, I just remember that it's the last scene. Yeah. So, but yeah, you should definitely check it out. You have, I but you have to watch it in order because it's definitely goes in order. You unless see, you just want to see yourself. No, I mean the <laughs> thing is, I get nervous about falling into a, a show that I get addicted to because then you just have to watch it. And, and there's been a few shows like that that I've been just. This will definitely be one of those. Wow. <laughs> definitely so. Well, maybe I really will. I, I. It's fun to get into a show like that. Right. Uh, I guess, tell me, just in closing, like what, what is one of your most memorable moments with fans, with a fan, if you can think of one? And I know there that that's a, uh, the typical question. Oh, I have so many. <laughs> my, my brain just shuffled through about 10 in the split seconds while we were talking. And there was a, uh, in Australia, in Brisbane, I was asked to uh, see someone who wasn't gonna go to my table. It was, it was something set aside. And I went and there was, uh, and I had done a radio interview the day before, and at, uh, I think he was uh, 12, he talked to me on the phone, and then his father called into the same radio interview, thanking me for talking to his son. So then the next day, they said the, the kid from the radio interview uh, the call-in show is here with his dad and I and there was a, a young boy in a wheelchair with his little brother and his dad not the mom it was just him those two and the dad and he had a letter that he had written and he wanted to read it to me and he had a disease that makes his bones soft so he could barely stand and writing was painful because his bones were soft so it had taken him like two weeks he hand wrote a letter of his love for me and read it to me when he was reading it to me his little brother had a tear coming down his face because of what he saw his big brother doing and his father had tears in his eyes and then he said i want to hand it to you and he got up off his wheelchair and walked a few steps and handed it to me and and i gave him a great big hug and you know hugs to everyone when a film can inspire a child whose bones are soft to write a letter to someone, 
and then I get to receive it and he, he read it to me and, and his whole family got to experience that. Anything that can create that kind of love and that kind of, 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 of bond and inspiration to someone to do something that's hard, I want to be a part of. Awesome. I, I have so many stories like that. It's just, it's, a, it's, it's an exceptional um, experience being able to be a part of that time after time after time. And each, each time is so special and I remember all of them. And I'm so honored to be in that kind of a position to be able to receive that kind of free, open love from people. It's just pure kindness. It's amazing, I, I'm, I'm so grateful it's a beautiful aspect of my life. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. And again, you're going to be at Dallas, Dallas Comic, Comic Show. Show. And then at the and that's Alamo, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday all day and Sunday. And then at the Alamo tomorrow night. Center is tomorrow night at okay. 6.30. They're screening Back to the Future and then a Q&A and I'll be signing autographs. And I'll be signing autographs. And, and taking pictures in the DeLorean. Yes. Okay. At the show. Right. And I would hope everyone comes and says hello. All right. Hey, thank you very much. My pleasure.